Emotional Intelligence and CHC Theory The cattell horn carroll theory of cognitive abilities aims to be a complete taxonomy of cognitive abilities. Though not strictly cognitive, there are motor abilities, that is, we have physical skills. There are different sensory modalities, and there are different parts of the brain that are specialized to process sensory information. It appears to be the case that there are different aspects of intelligence that help us reason with this sensory information. The evidence is most clear for visual-spatial ability and auditory processing. It is assumed that there are parts of the brain that facilitate reasoning with other kinds of sensory information as well. Humans have the ability to control attention, but this capacity is limited. Some aspects of intelligence are more sensitive to fluctuations in attention than others. In particular, fluid reasoning, short-term memory, and later we'll see processing speed, are sensitive to fluctuations in different aspects of attention. There are large individual differences in how much people know, but there are also different kinds of knowledge. Crystallized intelligence, or verbal comprehension knowledge, refers to the kind of knowledge that is highly valued within a culture, and to some degree everyone is expected to know. However, much of our knowledge is not general, but is domain-specific. People in different professions, people with different hobbies, happen to have specialized knowledge that other people are not expected to have. Though once considered the province of specialists, literacy and numeracy have become core knowledge domains in this culture. Brains process information at different rates, and there are different kinds of speeded abilities. There is psychomotor speed, speed of perception, attentional fluency, or processing speed, and the rate at which one can learn new information, and the fluency with which information can be retrieved from long-term memory. Thus, the cattell horn carroll theory of cognitive abilities distinguishes between power abilities, or abilities defined by their difficulty, and abilities that are defined by the speed at which the task can be done, rather than the difficulty of the task. This distinction is not a true dichotomy. Every task has speed accuracy trade-offs. In this diagram, there's something important missing. What about emotional intelligence? Where does it fit in? Research on emotional intelligence took off in the early 90s, long after most of the data sets that Horn and Carroll used to generate their models. We now have many high-quality data sets in which emotional intelligence was measured, and they've been accumulating for over 20 years. Where would emotional intelligence fit into this model? Mayer, Salovey, and Caruso, and I apologize if I've mispronounced the names, have proposed a very influential model of emotional intelligence. People differ in their ability to perceive emotions accurately. People differ in their ability to manage emotions intelligently. People differ in their levels of emotional understanding. Not shown here, people also differ in their ability to use emotion to facilitate reasoning. This last ability I haven't shown because the study I'm going to refer to didn't measure it. There's some controversy as to whether or not it's distinct from the other three. Now, if one wants to talk about emotional intelligence as a kind of conceptual category, we don't need any data at all. It is self-evident that we have emotions and that intelligent people have to take them into account. If, however, we want to talk about emotional intelligence as a kind of conceptual unity, we're going to need some data. Meyer, Caruso, and Salovey did propose some criteria for deciding whether or not something is or is not a kind of intelligence. First, it has to be a kind of mental performance. That is, there are correct answers and there are incorrect answers, and we're not just talking about preferences, interests, styles, motivation, and so forth. That is, we have to think about it as distinct from traditional measures of personality. Second, it is abundantly clear from literally thousands and thousands of data sets that all aspects of intelligence correlate. So, if your new intelligence doesn't correlate with any other measure of intelligence, at least to some degree, there are strong reasons to doubt whether or not we're actually measuring intelligence. If, however, the new measure of intelligence is not distinct from other measures of intelligence, then there's no real reason to have it. It's completely redundant. So a new intelligence needs to be somewhat correlated with other measures of intelligence, but not too highly. All other aspects of intelligence seem to develop with age. Therefore, we should expect that new measures of intelligence should do likewise. Raymond Cattell talked about the importance of finding measures that have incremental validity. That is, they should not only be distinct from other abilities, but they should predict things that other kinds of tests do not predict. 
or at least they should predict them a little bit better than other abilities do. Howard Gardner talks about the importance of identifying plausible brain functions associated with your new kind of intelligence, and also that there should be some plausible evolutionary history. That is, we need to be able to argue that your new intelligence that you're proposing helped our ancestors survive and reproduce. So, for example, you could talk about computer skills for sure, but to call something computer intelligence would be a little bit silly. Computers did not help our ancestors survive and reproduce, at least not yet. Mayor Caruso and Salovey believe that they've demonstrated that emotional intelligence does meet criteria such as these. If that's the case, where does emotional intelligence fit in CHC theory? Well, one thing we could do is set it alongside these other categories here. That is, emotional intelligence is its own thing, and it's distinct from every other thing. Another possibility is that emotional intelligence isn't a kind of functional unity, it's not its own thing, but different aspects of emotional processing are distributed among the categories that we already have. So, for example, we could talk about the motor skill that's associated with emotional expression, like the kinds of abilities that actors have. We could talk about emotional perception. We could talk about emotional management as being an aspect of controlled attention. And we could talk about emotional understanding as just another domain of knowledge. So how would we distinguish between this kind of model and this kind of model? A new study was published that tries to shed light on this question. You can tell what the answer is just from the title of the study. Emotional intelligence is a second stratum factor of intelligence. Evidence from hierarchical and bifactor models. It was published in the journal Emotion. The authors are Carolyn McCann, Dana Joseph, Daniel Newman, and Richard Roberts. The article's a good read, and I encourage you to read it yourself. It addresses many questions that I will not talk about here, but I want to highlight two findings from the study. First, the study measured five different aspects of CHC theory. Visual spatial ability, fluid reasoning, crystallized intelligence, quantitative knowledge, and one aspect of long-term memory, which is retrieval fluency, or what Carroll called GR. In addition, they measured emotion perception, emotion understanding, and emotion management. In one of the models, these three emotional abilities are correlated only because of their association with the general factor of intelligence. However, if emotional intelligence is a conceptual unity, it should have some residual correlation between the three factors that is not accounted for by G. Or in other words, these correlations are accounted for by some second stratum ability that we can call emotional intelligence. This was not the model tested in the article, but rather a hierarchical model like so. Thus, the three emotional abilities have correlations that are accounted for by the second stratum factor, emotional intelligence, which is, in turn, correlated with G. So, the preliminary answer as to where does emotional intelligence fit in CHC theory appears to be here. Now, we're going to need some replications, and it's possible that we're overlooking some very important questions. Unfortunately for me, the symmetry of my diagram is now broken. There's a hole right here. Now maybe there is something that would fill the void, but I'm not sure what that would be. Some sort of speeded aspect of emotional intelligence. Maybe the speed of emotion perception or something like that. Seems like a fun thing to think about and maybe to measure. It will be interesting what future research brings, but it is time to think long and hard about where is the place of emotional intelligence in the CHC taxonomy.